congratulating all of you for managing to get here in spite of what is apparently citywide gridlock. So those who made it, uh, I, I applaud you for your good luck. Those from AU didn't have as far to come. But it, it is an important event we have here, and we're delighted to have you. I, I want to thank you for joining us this evening as we acknowledge the impressive contributions of two highly talented career civil servants. My name is Barbara Romzek. I'm the Dean of American University School of Public Affairs, and I have the pleasure of welcoming you here this evening. The School of Public Affairs was founded more than 80 years ago. Students came to the school to learn the latest ideas in government management during the New Deal. It was so they could take that knowledge back to their new jobs that were being created and that were being upgraded and expanded in terms of responsibilities under the New, do, new Deal. So by 1937, the School of Public Affairs had over 1,000 federal employees enrolled in courses at the school. And today, more than 80 years later, uh, the school has over 2,000 distinguished alumni, many of them civil servants. Now, through the last eight decades, we've seen changes in the scope of government and in the nature of Washington and the climate within which public employees have to work. But our school has maintained an unwavering commitment to the importance of public service, to the commitment to educating uh, uh, students for careers in government. We work to develop them, to prepare them, and to connect them with public servants so that they can leave the campus well prepared to have uh, distinguished careers. And for nearly half a century, for nearly half of our 80 years of history, uh, we're not quite at the century mark, the school has reinforced its commitment to public service through our acclaimed Roger W. Jones Award. Through this award, we recognize federal career executives in the senior executive service. We recognize them for their exceptional service and dedication and work for the goals of government. Each year, a distinguished panel selects two individuals to receive this award. The awardees demonstrate superior leadership, outstanding organizational achievement, and a strong commitment to the development of future federal managers. We recognize the accomplishments that are built on dedication to service, commitment to continued improvement on the, in the government services on which we all rely. So congratulations to our two award winners tonight, Bob Holly, special agent in charge at the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and Nina Pelletier, assistant inspector general for the Evaluation and Inspections Division of the Department of Justice. Their dedication to public service is commendable. We are thrilled to be honoring them here tonight, and you will hear more about both of their stories shortly. We are also honored to have several members of the Award Selection Committee with us tonight, and these include the Chair of the Committee, Patrick Malone, uh, Mr. David Chu, I think he had to leave early, uh, Vice, Admiral, Vice Admiral David Pekoski, the Honorable Gwen Sykes, and our own Bob Tobias. You will find a complete list of the committee members in your program. These individuals graciously offered their time and brought their experience to the table during the deliberations over this award and whose extraordinary career warranted uh, this recognition. I would also like to thank our School of Public Affairs staff who have made tonight the special evening that it is. They include Jennifer Tether, Mary Margaret Herman, and Lisa Manning. Please acknowledge me and please join me in acknowledging both the committee members and the staff for their great work. Now it is my honor to turn the microphone over to Patrick Malone, who is our Director of the School of Public Affairs Key Executive Leadership Program, and also, as, you, as I mentioned, he chaired the uh, committee for the Roger Jones Award. Patrick. Thank you, Dean Romsack. Welcome, everyone, to American University and the School of Public Affairs. Wow, it's a terrific evening. Um, it's great seeing everyone here. It's always such a great occasion, and we look forward to this every year. 
it, it was my honor to serve as chairman of the selection committee this year. And I would like to thank the many members of that committee and also the key executive alumni advisory board who played a huge role in helping us work through the many, many applications that we had in the selection process. Thank you all for your time and your commitment to making this happen. This is a school of public affairs. And as such, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a social scientist. And there's a few social scientists in the room tonight. There's a few on the stage here. If anybody brought a dead cat, we could swing it and test it out, see if my theory works. But uh, we do have a lot here. And I decided that in preparation for this evening, that I would do a little bit of social science research. Many of us subscribe to various government websites, like FedBiz, Government Management Daily, GovExec, Today, those kind of things. So I decided what I would do is take a look at these sites over a 72-hour period and see what types of stories are being reported about the federal government. Not surprisingly, many of those stories are negative. Shutdowns, faulty hiring practices, pay freezes, congressional oversight, the list goes on and on. That is not what tonight is about. That is not what tonight is about. Tonight is about the other 99% of the time, the other 99% of the performance of our federal workforce, the good news. That's what tonight is about. We have the best educated, most talented, most dedicated and most diverse group of people of any government in the world. I look out in this audience and I see alumni of our program who are part of the government and are doing remarkable things to implement public policy. I see friends of the public service in the audience tonight who work tirelessly to support the goals and the mission of serving our nation. I see faculty members from the School of Public Affairs doing cutting edge research that informs the effective practice of public administration and policy. I look to my left over here and I see two nominators, two nominators, Mr. Brian Murphy and Inspector General Michael Horowitz, who took the time to do what great leaders do. They recognized the work that was being done, they understood and valued its impact, and they took the time to sit down and write up an award nomination. And they told someone about it. Mr. Murphy, I.G. Horowitz, thank you for what you guys did to make this happen tonight. We wouldn't be on the stage with these two winners were it not for the two of you, so thank you very much. And of course, we have our award winners as well, uh, Nina Pelletier and Bob Holly. Uh, the reason we're here tonight, Nina and Bob have had tremendous success and impact on the federal service. We'll get to hear more about them shortly. I was interviewing a graduate student this summer for our key executive MPA program, and we were discussing the beauty of the public service and the mentors that had influenced him over the years. And he told me a story about a woman who was a huge part of his professional development. And what she described was delivering civilization. And she said, that's what people in the public service do. They deliver civilization. And I think that's a beautiful phrase. Those of us that are the recipients of that gift got to drive here on safe roads. Maybe they were crowded roads, and maybe we're still on the road. But we got to drive here on safe roads. We get to drink clean water. We get to eat food that's free of dangerous chemicals. We get to live in a nation that has free-flowing commerce, and we get to go to sleep at night knowing that we're being kept safe. Thank you all for delivering civilization, and thank you for joining our celebration of leaders like Nina Pelletier and Bob Holly, who do this really, really well. So let's get on with our celebration, shall we? It is my pleasure, it is my pleasure to first introduce uh, Mr. Brian Murphy. He's our first nominator. Mr. Murphy began his career as an infantry officer in the United States Marine Corps. Since then, he served in a number of roles in the Federal Bureau of Investigation, including as a supervisor in the FBI's Headquarters Counterterrorism Division. He's also had assignments such as serving the FBI legal as the FBI legal attache in Algiers and other areas in the Middle East, managing a joint terrorism task force in Pittsburgh, assignment as a special agent in charge of counterterrorism operations in Chicago, and in his current role as the section chief 
for the FBI's Countering Violent Extremism Program. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Brian Murphy. Uh, Mr. Hawley is an easy guy to introduce and a hard guy to describe his leadership skills because they are, they are par excellence. And if you know him, that, that's a true statement. So uh, before I get to some of his leadership qualities, I just want to go over his impressive uh, resume and his career. He's a graduate of the Harvard of the Midwest, which is uh, Ball State, where he met his wife, Tony, uh, which is uh, a, a clearly a marriage that's built to last. So uh, probably the best thing he ever did, as he says uh, multiple times. After that, he made the unfortunate choice of not joining the Marine Corps. Instead, he went into the Army for nine years. And from there, I, I think, um, you know, one would have to really look at is, is a leader born or developed? And, you know, I did not have the fortune to know him back there, but whatever the Army did to him, he certainly came out uh, uh, as an as a extremely capable leader. He joined the FBI in 1995 in the Chicago office, and very soon afterwards, um, he went to the headquarters counterterrorism division and excelled there, and that was one of the uh, first times that I met him and admired him and uh, knew that was someone that me, like many others, wanted to emulate. After that, um, he came back to Chicago, and he was a supervisor of a uh, terrorism squad at a very pivotal time in the, US, uh, in the United States history and helped uh, really shape policy and uh, really uh, kept America safe. And I can say that as not a cliche, but that is true. The things he did back there were really impressive. Uh, he was selected to become a section chief within our counterterrorism most elite uh, group, where all that pressure for preventing attack, those people that are actually up at night, um, you know, that's the pressure that he was under, and I, I can't uh, overstate that pressure. He took that pressure, and he had the, uh, everybody uh, leading him and believing in his mission, and was highly successful at that job. Um, after that, he was selected to be the special agent in charge of the, uh, our field office in Indianapolis, and uh, in short order, because of the um, the noise, the positive noise coming out of Indianapolis was quickly picked up, and uh, I think he was ready to uh, retire from there, but or go to retirement, but our director at that time said, Bob, uh, I always call him sir, but now that he's out of the bureau, I guess I can call him Bob. Um, you know, it's not an option. Uh, you're coming back. We need people like you, and it was a really good thing that that happened at that time. He served as a, a, as a deputy assistant director in our counterterrorism division uh, after that. And one of the most critical uh, things in recent memory happened, which was the Boston Marathon bombing. And although Bob was back at our headquarters, uh, he was called upon to go and enable that team, uh, which was, was doing their best, but uh, had some challenges there, and bring people together in a sudden, quick way. And I think we all saw the results. And that is directly attributable to uh, his leadership and uh, his commitment to the job. Um, after that, I think he came back and slept for a little while at least. I'm not sure it was very long, but if you know Bob, that's a, that's a truism. Uh, he, was, uh, he came back and was assigned to be the special agent in charge of our fourth largest uh, field office in Chicago and managing uh, close to 1,000 people. Um, so that's a short uh, summary of his career, and along that way, he's won every, every award you can think about in the FBI uh, and in, within the interagency as well. So why, why him? Why is Bob such a good a leader? Well, some of the things that uh, uh, myself, that I observed and my colleagues is he empowers people, he, he listens to everybody, and he makes decisions. So as I was thinking about it, um, you know, a lot, all good leaders do that, and I don't think that rises to who he is. So that's, that's, those are traits of all good leaders, and he has those. I think what makes him distinctive and a cut above the rest is the fact how genuine he is and how humble he is. And uh, during the most stressful times and those difficult challenges, uh, like many government and any organization, the one constant we have is change, but he doesn't change. That, that genuine nature, that humbleness, his vision, uh, the way he uh, is able to lead his people through the, the difficult times, that has never changed. And it's from the most uh, routine things to the stressful position, the stressful things that we all uh, encounter. So uh, that's what makes him a cut above the rest. And that is not a quality that I think uh, many leaders have, and there are very few that I've ever seen that come close to uh, Mr. Holly. So it's definitely my great pleasure to introduce uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Robert Holly.
Pretty articulate for Marine, huh? Yeah. I am extremely humbled and honored um, to be recognized for this prestigious award from such a prestigious uh, university. Um, I can think of a dozen more people um, that are probably more deserving in the FBI um, than me for this award. Uh, several of them are sitting in here um, with me today. Um, Andrew McCabe, Matt DeSarno, Mike McPherson, Joe Carrico, and, and Brian Murphy. All individuals that I've had the opportunity to work for and work with. Um, and I, uh, I am extremely fortunate um, to have had the opportunity not only to work with them, but to call each one of them friends. Um, but more importantly, um, I could have never accomplished what I have accomplished, have done what I have done without the support of my lovely wife, Tony. I have done three tours here at FBI headquarters, um, and each one of those tours um, was here by myself. I left my family back in the Chicago uh, area for, for the right reasons, but it doesn't make the decision any easier, and it doesn't make the work any uh, easier here when your family's away from you. So I could not be standing up here uh, today accepting this award without the support of my lovely wife, sweetheart. I love you very much. Um, <laughs> And I want to thank uh, everybody that is uh, taking the time out of their busy evenings to come here and, and recognize me. But uh, I accept this award on behalf of um, um, everybody I've ever worked with in the FBI and the United States Army. Thank you. Our next nominator is Inspector General Michael E. Horowitz. Mr. Horowitz serves as the IG for the Department of Justice, where he oversees a nationwide workforce of more than 400 special agents, auditors, inspectors, attorneys, and support staff. Prior to his role as Inspector General, he was in private practice where he focused on white collar defense, internal investigations, and regulatory compliance. He's had a number of impressive roles throughout his career, including as a board member of the Ethics Resource Center and Society for Corporate Compliance and Ethics, as a presidentially appointed and Senate confirmed commissioner on the U.S. Sentencing Commission, and as an assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. It's an honor to welcome Inspector General Horowitz. Um, thank you for the kind introduction, and thank you for um, hosting this wonderful ceremony um, as someone who grew up in the J Department of Justice, which has over 100,000 employees. You've picked two great department employees to honor today, and let me add my congratulations as well to you, Agent Holly, for an outstanding career and, and uh, the recognition you deserve today. Um, let me turn to Nina Pelletier, um, who um, joined the Justice Department in 1989, uh, in 1990, in 1989 she joined the federal government, um, having started with EPA. One year later, quickly realized the Justice Department was a better place to be, um, and has stayed in the Justice Department um, in the 25 years since. Um, she joined the Office of Inspector General in 2003, um, and uh, joined us as a line attorney in our Oversight and Review Division which handles some of our most complex and challenging uh, reviews. It's the division that has done a number of oversight uh, reviews that have become well known, including the firing of U.S. attorneys, the oversight of some of the post-9-11 authorities and national security work, um, and Ina has been in the middle of many of the most significant um, reviews we did um, during that time period. Um, and when I came on board in 2012 um, as Inspector General, one of the first vacancies that I was faced with was in our um, Evaluations and Inspections Division. We have five divisions in the um, IG's office, and the Evaluation and Inspections Division does a lot of our policy-related oversight work. Um, and as I looked in our organization for a new leader for that division, which um, was facing some challenges trying to consider 
where it fit in with an, an organization that had an audit division, or we have a large audit division, which as I mentioned has an oversight re and review division of lawyers, which does a lot of specialized reviews, and trying to figure out, um, as I was thinking about the issues that, and the challenges we faced as an inspector general office, um, how was that division going to go forward and look? And how was it going to be, in many respects, rebuilt? Because a lot of, we had had a lot of turnover. This is back in 2012, 2013. Sequestration, shutdowns, all of those terrible things that were occurring. Um, and part of it was figuring out who was going to be an inspirational leader uh, for that division and, and move it forward and have a vision for how um, to see it succeed going forward. And interviewed a number of people and was immediately impressed with Nina's ideas, thoughts, and vision for this section and um, asked her if she would do the job first as an, she first served as an acting capacity, then as the SES uh, leader of the organization. And from the moment she hit the ground there, you saw the energy, the excitement, the leadership that she gave the organization. And I saw it um, in a number of ways. In the work that we do together, we work very closely together on all issues all the time. But I also saw it in the people that worked for Nina. It's a section is noted in the program, about 35 or so people. It's, it was far less than that when Nina got there. And one of the things she was doing when she first got there was building the section back up and finding extraordinarily strong and talented people to come in and, and be part of that. Senior people, junior people, and being able to lead them together. Um, and she did a great job of that. And I not only, as I said, saw it personally, myself, and the work we've done, but what I saw something else was truly extraordinary. And some of the folks from the division are here today to honor her. But they would come to me and to tell me how wonderful she had been as a leader. And to have the people in the staff come to you and tell you that is something that's truly extraordinary. And how she has built that section together with the support she's given it, and not only leading with a vision, but leading by doing, being part of teams, working with the teams, but also putting in place mentoring structures and being an outstanding mentor to a lot of people in that division who were new, who wanted to understand what we did as an IG's office. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Inspector General work, it is a very challenging place to be. Um, there are very few people who are patting you on the back for the work that you do. Um, usually they're, you're ducking um, from uh, various um, objects coming your way. Um, but uh, Nina, throughout, has done extraordinary, extraordinary work. And I know she's not only held in high regard in our organization, but throughout the Justice Department. And we have had reviews. And again, uh, just to give you a sense of her talent and ability, I'd heard this before I selected her. But I've been at meetings, and I've, I've followed up with her on meetings, where we've met with department components. And she's come back and said, you know what? We've got to fix this. We've got to change this. Or we don't have it exactly right. They've explained certain things. And that's exactly what we should be doing as an organization. Um, I couldn't be prouder of her. I can't think of anybody more deserving of today's recognition. Um, thank you for everything you've done, Nina. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you Nina Pelletier. Thank you. I am so honored to be here tonight with all of you and so grateful to be getting this Roger W. Jones Award for Executive Leadership. And it's so great that it's being given to me from the AU School of Public Affairs. And it's truly a gift to be recognized for doing something I genuinely love to do. Um, I want to say thank you to the selection committee and thank you so much to Michael, my nominator. Um, for seeing the potential in me and for selecting me to lead the division and then for getting out of my way and letting me do it. Um, <laughs> well, um, the front office's support has meant so much to me um, and 
your support really has meant everything to the division as well. I also really want to thank my management team, Sarah Baytips, Aaron Lane, and Jim Terrell. You believed in me, you trusted me enough to walk essentially into the unknown with me as we restructured our division, and I think it's turned out really well, and that is because of you helping me. I so appreciate it. I can't, I can't convey enough. I think you guys should be getting this award instead of me. Um, I look forward to continuing the work we've begun developing and grooming our staff to become future leaders as well. I'm also grateful to the many mentors I've had along the way. Um, some of you informally who form my committee of experts and you know who you are, and others a little bit more formally, my former boss, Cynthia Schneider, who served as a leadership example for me and whose advice and counsel, I just would not be here without her, and I, I'm so grateful, Cynthia. Last but not least, I want to thank my husband. You're, you've made my life so much better than it would be without you. I, I really, I, from the bottom of my heart, I love you so much. Thank you so much for being there for me. So thinking about Roger Jones, I suspect that if he were here with us, he would agree that it's just really an amazing thing what happens when you put people with wide and varied experiences together to solve problems and to you know, find ways to improve our agency and to implement the roles of good government. I've been so lucky to lead a group that exemplifies those ideals. Um, and we're gonna continue that work. So I wanna thank you so much for honoring me in this way. Thank you. So it is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for this evening, Dr. Reginald Wells. Dr. Wells is the Deputy Commissioner of the Social Security Administration's Office of Human Resources and serves as the Social Security Administration's Chief, Capital, Chief Human Capital Officer and Chief Diversity Officer. He's had a stellar career in the public service, having been the Acting Commissioner of Administration for Children and Families and the Deputy Commissioner of Administration on Developmental Disabilities at the Department of Health and Human Services. He's also worked for 10 years for the District of Columbia's Department of Human Services, serving as both Deputy Commissioner and Acting Commissioner for the DC Commission on Social Services. He is an alumni of the Key Executive Leadership Program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even better, even better, he's adjunct faculty in the School of Public Affairs. I highly recommend his course. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Reggie Wells. Good evening. It is uh, truly my pleasure to be here. I absolutely love public service. And there are two organizations that uh, occasionally call upon me to either talk to a group of students or aspiring leaders um, or in an awards event like this one. And I never say no to them. And Patrick knew that, so that's why he asked me to be here tonight. He knew that in spite of any gridlock there might have been, I'd find a way to get here because American University does a stellar job of developing public servants. And I very much appreciate it. I am the recipient of people who have been in training programs um, and developmental programs at this university. And it, there's no university that does it better. Um, some may get a little more attention and recognition um, in parts of the government and certainly with Congress, but American U is, is among the best um, that I've seen. So I want to thank you, Patrick, for inviting me to be here this evening. Um, I very much enjoy working with you. Um, I, I only do that, that one course, but it, it really is an opportunity to work with you and the other key people in the key program. I want to thank um, Dean Rumzik for, it, it's my first time meeting her, I've heard some very, very nice things about you and your leadership style. 
So it doesn't surprise me that you're here as part of this event. I certainly want to thank um, Bob Tobias, who um, I told a story earlier to Dean Rumzik that uh, my mother just loves Bob Tobias, um, which, which is high praise. My, my mother, I, I, I love public service in part because I um, am a second generation Fed. My mother worked for the Internal Revenue Service for 45 years before her retirement in the Philadelphia uh, uh, office. And, um, and, and she, you know, reminds you she was not on the collection side, she was on the, the, the service side. She did claims for people. Uh, uh, tax returns for people who came into to that office and when they moved to automation that's when she decided it was time to go but after 45 years it was time to go um, and so she was a mid-level manager and uh, one day I shared with her I had met someone who had been the national president of NTU who is now with American University and she said and his name and I said Bob Tobias. She said, Bob Tobias. I love Bob Tobias. Now, most mid-level managers, as we were talking earlier, um, usually have some issues with, with labor. I mean, labor pushes hard in federal agencies, certainly certain federal agencies. And I'm sure that was true with IRS, but Bob Tobias, as she pointed out to me, was somebody who did it with great integrity. And so she always appreciated the way in which you negotiated deals with, with management. Um, I want to thank the nominators of the um, awardees. Um, as I think Patrick said very aptly, um, we wouldn't be here had you not done that job, and we appreciate the fact that you recognize talent when you see it and you appreciate the work of your people. And I think that does happen a lot in government, but we don't all often hear about it a lot in government. I want to thank the families um, who are here. Um, these awardees could not do the job they did had you not been there as a rock for them through all the good times and bad times that we as public servants have to endure. And so uh, you definitely deserve some recognition this evening because they couldn't have gotten to this without you. Um, this award um, is something that um, I've known about for a while. I've, I've never been nominated for it though. I really have to take, I have to take issue with my leadership because they've never nominated me. But I, I would draw your attention to two names among those who have received the award. So in 2001, um, and, and Bob is very familiar with this, um, Paul Barnes, uh, my predecessor actually, was, who was the Deputy Commissioner of Human Resources, received this award. And he actually, this was right before he went back to the Atlanta region to be the regional commissioner where he had started some 40 some years before as a claims rep out of Alabama. Um, he went back as the regional commissioner, highest grade you could have in the agency, and um, retired from that position uh, about three or four years later. Um, but Paul received this award. And then I would draw your attention to the awardee in 1983. It was a gentleman by the name of David O'Cook, who was the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Administration at DOD. And his name jumped out at me because I actually was nominated and received an award that's in his name now. Um, and I was very honored by that, the way our honorees are honored this evening. So I know how it feels to be nominated for an award that's a name by somebody who had a distinguished career in, in public service. Um, it doesn't really get any better than that. We come to this work not because we intend to get rich and um, if we tried to do that, the inspector generals of the agencies would take care of us on that one and we'd be in jail. Um, and we, we certainly don't come for the recognition, but um, it's very important to get the recognition. Um, and I, I, I had an opportunity to talk with both awardees um, before the program started, and they are the most humble people you'd ever want to meet. Those of you who know them well know that about them. And I said, I said to uh, JR, that's, that's one of the reasons you're getting the award. You, you're getting it in part because you do what you do with excellence and you don't even feel the need to have people tell you you do it with excellence. It's automatic, it's what you do, it's who you are. Um, I've had the pleasure um, over the last several months to be uh, part of a group of people who have been asked by the president and OMB and OPM to look at the senior executive service in government and to recommend reform 
activities. Um, and it's been a, an amazing experience. It's certainly quite an honor to be on a, a distinguished group like that. But um, it's, it's very interesting to me uh, that as we started to look at how the Senior Executive Service operates in government and may need to change um, in keeping with the times and may need to get back to some of the core principles upon which the SES was developed, um, it became increasingly clear to me that one of the things that was missing was more of this. So again, I, I commend American U for acknowledging excellence in government. Um, it, is, it is a very exciting time when that happens. A colleague of mine, uh, Catherine Medina, when many of you in the room may know Catherine, uh, she was the executive director of the Chief Human Capital Officers Council uh, for a few years, and uh, mostly during uh, Director John Berry's time. But she was quoted in an article that came out just this week. She said that if we want better government, we must start by understanding what works, and we must celebrate those who dedicate their lives to making ours better. And I think that, in a way, says it all and really does reflect what we're here to celebrate and honor this evening. Um, as was said earlier, uh, we bring civilization. And, and, and the one thing that bothers me the most, I guess, as I worked with that SES reform work group is that we're working in an environment where it appears that civility has been, I won't say lost, but set aside, hopefully just for a while. Um, I'd like to believe that at some point we will get back to it. I'd like to believe that there will be a recognition that what we bring to the table is that civilization and along with it that civility that makes America great as a country. Um, I think that the honorees that we're recognizing this evening do, did a tremendous job and do a tremendous job to make that a reality. Um, I know I sleep better knowing you're there. Um, I think most of the people in the room certainly are in awe of the kinds of things that were acknowledged as part of your contribution to our government. Um, a lot of attention has been given to the kind of world we live in today, and I think the acronym we're using now and a lot is VUCA, you know, the, a world that is volatile, um, uncertain, um, chaotic, and ambiguous. And many of us um, address those complex challenges and don't always know what those outcomes are going to be that we work hard toward. Um, I think uh, Admiral Allen talked about it a lot when he talked about his success with the Gulf crises on two separate occasions. And he talked about people coming together, no, no, no single one of which had the answers to that problem, but by bringing everybody together and working with them in a way that got to the best solutions is how we are going to get through these very, very difficult and challenging times. So I want to commend both of you for the work that you did, not only for America, but in developing a new generation of people who will carry on the values that you clearly embody. Um, one of the things I think we're all charged with in our leadership roles is making sure that we leave many behind us that can pick up and do maybe even better what we were attempting to do. And I think it's clear from both the acknowledgement of the people who are here um, the people who nominated you, that both of you have put a lot of time and attention into making sure that you leave many people behind you with the kind of values and the kind of commitment to service that will once again uh, pay back um, tenfold. So I want to thank you this evening for what you do. I want to thank everybody for being here to acknowledge what you do. Um, it wouldn't be a party if there weren't people here to participate in it. So thank you all for being here, but thank you most importantly, because you really do embody what makes me get up and come to work every day and feel energized to do it because I know I don't do this alone. So thank you all very much. Well, it's been a terrific night. Uh, thank you again to everyone who made this possible. And congratulations again to Nina and Bob. Please join us for a reception just outside the auditorium. And on behalf of the American University School of Public Affairs, thank you. We look forward to seeing you next year. Have a nice night.